The four-team college football playoff was supposed to be revolutionary when it was announced in 2014. Come to find out, it seemed to have ignited even more controversy than the previous format, which was the BCS, also known as the Bowl Championship Series. I remember the transition from the BCS to the college football playoff, and people thought it was going to solve all the problems in the entire sport. They thought there would never be another 2011, where teams such as Oklahoma State and Stanford felt like they were left out. 2003 can also be used as an example here. Well, I'm sorry, guys. 2014 happened where the Baylor Bears got snubbed. Bottom line, some team is going to be upset no matter what. But what I want to look at is the differences in how these respective systems selected teams. Take away the two-team natty and the four-team playoff for a second. What is better for college football? An objective computer-based ranking or a human committee-based ranking? I'm going to have to do this again before we start. Too many of you guys are forgetting to subscribe. You are enjoying my content. You're watching it all the way through, but you're not subscribing. Make sure to do so to never miss out on another video like this. The BCS began in 1998. Wow, just seeing the logo is nostalgic and reminds me of my childhood. Anyways, in this format, there was a national championship game which stood alone, along with five bowl games that were considered BCS bowls. The Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, and the Orange Bowl. There were also conference affiliation tied to these, which made games like the Rose Bowl so iconic. Seeing the Pac-12 and the Big Ten battle it out each year was thrilling. The top two teams in the final rankings would meet in the Natty, while the other teams behind them would be dispersed into the other BCS bowls. So what was the process in selecting these top teams a computer yes like this amazing macbook pro that my mom got me for my birthday that i'm making this video on chat gbt made the rankings ai is taking over no i'm just kidding it was a combination of multiple factors first the polls the harris interactive poll which was basically a smarter ap poll and the usa today coaches poll were used to give each team a score then the computer element came into play the easiest way to put it is that it generated another number based on six other polls the final formula was the Harris poll percentage plus the coaches poll percentage plus the computer poll percentage divided by three. That gave you your BCS ranking. You might be thinking, this is crazy. How can the extraordinary sport of college football with all these student athletes that devote their life to the game be decided by a damn computer? Well, call me crazy because I actually love this system. Of course, I didn't like the fact that only two teams played for the national championship. That's a whole nother topic in itself, but I did enjoy the objectivity of the selection. The BCS did it in a way where bias and inconsistency was completely taken out of the picture, where we are vulnerable to that now in the current playoff system. Your MacBook isn't a Georgia fan. Numbers don't lie. I'm not calling out Georgia fans. I'm just using you as an example. The college football playoff was created in 2014 with a new approach to choosing teams. A 13-member selection committee would meet six to seven times per season and release rankings. Of course, the most important selection show was in early December, deciding who would go to the playoffs and the rest of the New Year Six Bowls that rotated, which are pretty much consolations for not being in the top four. First off, I already noticed a problem with this. 13 is just too small of a committee. I would have liked to seen 30 to even the playing field if there was bias. The committee said that they didn't want to go too big, but I really don't see a problem with going too big. If it takes extra time to make conclusions, that's okay because getting it right is crucial. They aren't even paying these members to do this, so add Adding more is not going to create more expenses. So who exactly are these people? Because not many people actually know. The 13 members are comprised of former and current athletic directors. What I don't like is that these ADs are not even required to attend any games in person, but are expected to, quote, extensively watch highlights, which is not the end of the world. But if you're using human element, at least give it to the people who know the game the best and who are there. It's only right. The criteria for the selection is as follows. Play on the field, which is also known as the eye test. Conference championships, which have not seemed to weigh much in the past. Strength of schedule, which is a valid one. And also head-to-head -head matchups or games against common opponents. The problem is that when these rankings come out, they tend to be all over the place, which I already touched on in a previous video for what things look like here in 2023. If you want an in-depth look on this subject, go check it out after you watch this one. Link in the description. Not to mention, people have feelings and biases, which could get in the way of clearly choosing the top teams, which has been called out many times by big names in the landscape of the sport. A computer does not do this and is at least consistent. Many people scoff when they hear the term eye test because it varies so much person to person and expert to expert. The members of the committee also rotate over time, meaning the consistency and in individual criteria changes year after year, which sounded like a good idea at first to keep pace with the changing landscape of the sport, but it's been a total mess, leaving a majority of college football fans upset. The four-team college football playoff obviously failed, which is why we are moving towards a 12-team bracket in 
in 2024. What I like about the new format is that there's automatic bids for Power 5 champions, which at least adds some clarity to the selection. I think that's a very good step in the right direction moving forward. In my perfect world, the playoff would be 12 teams with automatic bids for the Power Conferences and one Group of 5 conference. Then the next best teams are selected by consistent computer-based rankings. I don't think the BCS was perfect, but the method of selection was much easier to digest for fans and less controversial than the playoff committee mess. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Oh my gosh, a live Saturday shenanigans outro. This is what I look like. If you haven't seen the shorts or the TikToks, you probably don't know, but I'm announcing myself to the world right now. I just wanted to make this and thank you guys so much. We're nearing a thousand subscribers and I feel like I say it every video. The support that you guys give just absolutely amazes me and inspires me to make more content. Feels like a couple weeks ago, I was doing this for five or 10 people, five or 10 views. And it was fun because, I mean, I love college football. I didn't care that no one was watching. But now with your guys' support and seeing your comments and the discussions and really building a community and a family, it makes it 10 times better. This journey is not just with me. This journey is for us. And it's just starting. I'm going to be posting videos three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. I'm going to be making short-form content every single day on TikTok and YouTube shorts. I'm going to be doing interactive polls. We're just getting started. It's a really fun time. But I want to say thank you to you guys. And if if you haven't subscribed to join the best community in college football i'm gonna cue the regular intro right now i've been saturday shenanigans your home for unfiltered college football content and i'll see you guys in the next one i love you guys